When you analyze the data collection, one of the most important facts to discover about that data is the average or mean value. For example, for the values in cells A4 through A13, I have calculated the mean or average as being 574.2. And when I click cell C1, you can see that I use the formula average, and then I indicated that the formula should consider the cells A4 to A13. In addition though, it's useful to know how much the data varies from that average. In other words, is there an extremely large range of values or do the values tend to be grouped more tightly? And in this movie, I will show you how to analyze your data to discover two important measures, the variance and the standard deviation. Variance is a measure of the error, that is, the distance of a value from the mean. And there's a specific way that you calculate it. The first thing you need to do is to discover the error for each term. So for my values 500, 175, and so on, I want to create formulas that find the difference between that value and the mean of 574.2. I can do that by creating a series of formulas. So in cell B4, I'll type equal, and then A4 minus C1. I don't want my reference to cell C1 to change, so I'll press F4 to make that reference an absolute reference. In other words, it won't change regardless of where I move or copy the formula. I'll press Enter. And you can see that the difference is 74.2. And that makes sense because 500 minus 574.2 is negative 74.2. Now I will select cell B4 and drag the fill handle down to copy the formula down to cell B13. And I have a similar calculation for each of the other values in my list. Variance is actually the average of the sum of the squared errors. So the next step is to square the errors. Those are in cells B4 through B13. So I'll click in cell C4, type equal, and then B4, then a caret, and then the number two. So I have B4 raised to the second power. Press enter. And there's the squared error. So I'll click that and drag down. And you can see that I have squared error for each of my terms. Now to find the variance, as I said, I need to calculate the average of those values. So I'll click in cell C15, type equal, and then average. And I'll select cells C4 through C13 type around parentheses, and press enter. So that calculation tells me that I have a variance of about 53,500. And again, that is the average of the squared errors. I wanted to show you what this calculation looked like in long form so that you would have a better understanding of the meaning of the formula I'm about to type in. Rather than going through all these steps, you can just use the VARP function, which is available in Excel. So I'll click cell F15, type equal, then VARP, left parentheses, and I'll select cells A4 through A13, right parentheses, and enter. And you see, I get approximately the same value. Now you might wonder why I used a function called VARP. And if I go back to the formula and backspace over everything back to the letter P, you can see that I have a number of options. If I were to just type in var or use the new function in Excel 2010 called var.s, then Excel would calculate the variance based on a sample as opposed to the entire population. I personally never use var or var.s and allow Excel to calculate based on a sample. Modern computers are easily fast enough to deal with any data set that you want to throw at them within reason. So even if you're calculating 
a variance based on tens of thousands of values, modern computers can handle it just fine. So always use var p or var dot p and not var or var dot s. So I'll press escape to get out of the tooltip and escape again to exit editing mode. And the next calculation is for standard deviation. The standard deviation is extremely useful. First I'll show you how to calculate it and then I'll tell you how to use it. So I'll click in cell C17 and standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. So in C17, I'll type in equal, then square root the SQRT function. And the value that I want to find the square root of is in cell C15. So I'll put that in parentheses, press tab, and I get a standard deviation of about 231.3. So what that value tells me is that I have a mean of 574.2 and a standard deviation of 231. What that means, and I go into much more detail on this elsewhere in the course, is that about 68% of my values will be within 231 of the mean in either direction. So going down to about 343 and up to 805. So most of my values, more than half of them, will be within 231 of my average. And as we get farther from the mean, there will be fewer and fewer values occurring. So that is what the standard deviation means. And as you probably guessed, there is a function to calculate it. So I'll click in cell F17, type equal, and then stdev p. And again, this is the standard deviation for the entire population. Left parentheses, select cells A4 through A13, right parentheses to close, press tab, and I get the same value, 231.299. I've gone through a lot of steps to show you how to calculate variance and standard deviation. A lot of courses only show you how to use the formulas and they don't really explain what's going on behind them. So I hope from seeing this long form explanation that you have a better handle on what variance and standard deviation actually measure.